Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda, and this is Gizmo. We're the Village's Newcomers. Big show for you today. We're going to talk about things like we're back from our cruise. Crime in the Villages. Do you really want your own pool? Jerry's going to start a new hobby. And there are rats in the villages? Oh, no. Don't tell me that. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We're late. It's late. It's the latest we've ever shot one of these shows. <laughs> yes. We're out of our normal time zone. Mm -hmm. We've been away on that cruise we told you about. We're back. We're rushed. But I still think we have a good show for you today. Let's start it off with some shout outs. <music> Steve and Terry Norman are pointing to their home on that model. I love that model of the villages. That's down in the Everglades Rec Center. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. George, Karen, and Michi took a lifestyle stay, and I think they're going to take the plunge. Tom and Melissa Kaiser recently took the Sumter Landing boat ride. And here they are with Beth and Mike, and they say they love the tour. It's a fun little, it's only two bucks, two dollars, and they <laughs> tell you all kinds of malarkey about the villages. Chuck and Sarah Collins are from Raleigh, North Carolina. And they're standing in front of that big board. And they're pointing out their new home at, that they bought in the village of De La Vista. Look at this photo. It's amazing. It was sent to us by Jake. Jake and Shirley live up in the village of Sable Chase. And he caught this storm rolling in. Isn't that an amazing shot? And this is Gizmo. He's still working on that big raw hide bone. It's hard for him to uh, chew, and he's not getting any progress at all. And, but don't you try to take it away from him. No. Mm -hmm. And we had so many very helpful people that told us, don't let him eat raw hide. <laughs> well, luckily, he, he has not even made a dent in that thing. Yeah. It's, in fact, it's his friend now. He just <laughs> carries it around all over the place. Look at these guys over Citrus Grove. That's beautiful. Margaret Stein said in this picture, waiting for the movers to come, watching us on TV with that beautiful puppy. She must live in our neck of the woods, <laughs> up near Louisville, Kentucky, Oh, because she hired the same movers that we used. Oh, nice. They were great movers. And I hope they do just as good mm -hmm. a job for you. Yeah. Eric and Jennifer. They sent us this picture of their daughter, Olivia. Look at her. She's standing in front of that big old target. She won the gold medal at the village's archery camp. She had no experience whatsoever. She'd never shot a bow before. And they said that they had a lot of help from an instructor named Guy. Congratulations. Olivia, that's great, Olivia. I tried to do that archery before. It is fun. It's a little difficult, but it is fun. We, in fact, when, when we left Indiana, we left a bunch of trophies yeah. that Linda won yeah. shooting archery. I did. <laughs> Here's a great shot of a fine-looking couple. Unfortunately, I lost your name. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> and how about that little doll with him? Isn't he cute? I'm sorry I can't identify you, but... Uh, Sir, you have the best head of hair on the show today. <laughs> and here's a beautiful spot you might want to visit. We try to take our golf cart ride through that area whenever we're there. Just on the other side of the bridge at Laurel Manor Rec Center is this amazing tunnel of trees. I think it's one of the best hidden gems of the villages. Just look at this. And this is a multimodal trail going right through it.
only about a quarter of a mile long, but really beautiful. You need to bring your golf cart up here and see this. Northern side of the villages at the corner of Buena Vista and 466. I'm taking up a new hobby. As if I didn't have enough hobbies. You don't have, do you have enough time to do any hobbies? <laughs> well, this one is, you can see on your screen there, I'm gonna tumble rocks and glass and uh, try to make some works of art. I'm looking forward to it. I did that once years ago and I made some really cool looking stones. You put some grit in, you tumble them for a week and then you put a different grit in and it yeah. comes out shiny like a gemstone. It's, it's wonderful. But I can't find any stones here in Florida. <laughs> Where are they? When you move down here, if you'll just grab a couple of beautiful stones and bring them along and uh, throw them <laughs> our way, uh, I'll give them a try in the rock tumbler. There you go. <laughs>
You've seen the donut cutter that I use right. to cut around each one of our sprinkler heads, and we probably have mm -hmm. 30 or 40 right. sprinkler okay. heads. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then invasive grass can crawl right up over the top of them. Yeah. But we got a letter that talked about south of 44 a month ago or so, we had three days of torrential downpours. A lot of our neighbors are part-timers, so some ask us to keep an eye on their properties. During the rainstorms, we noted a river of water flowing between the backs of the houses. There are numerous drains in the ground to handle this, so we were perplexed as to why all that water was coming from the drain directly behind our house. And we were seeing geysers of water shooting up into the air as far as our eyes could see. They found that their drain was the only one not covered by St. Augustine grass. There were runners like a choking mat of grass blocking the drains. In between the downpours, he, I imagine it's the husband, it always is, <laughs> cleared the grass away from six other drains that were blocked and that seemed to do the trick. Uh, so when you have sprinklers, we were not used to that. No. We've had a couple of instances where we discovered that our mm. sprinklers, the top had blown off or right. this or that was wrong. I think you said last week. Yes, we did. And that will cause a geyser. It will shoot up straight in the air and you've got to get that head back on. Or you're going to lose a lot of water. <laughs> well, in this case that we're talking about, it was rainwater. But yeah. just the point is, there are a whole lot of things to watch for. And uh, sprinklers, drains, etc., have to be in tip-top shape here in Florida. Mm -hmm. This is from Lisa. Where we live, there has been an increase in crime that cars are getting broken into at the local parks and even at targets in broad daylight to smash windows and steal purses. We like to take walks, but we no longer feel safe driving to the parks and walking the trails. Have you seen an increase in car or golf cart theft of items like this in the villages? Lisa, I, I don't know where you live. You didn't tell us. There are two newspapers in the villages. One of them likes to point out every bit of crime. And a lot of that crime is committed by people outside the villages. But yes, we have crime here. We have 130 some thousand people. So you're always gonna have some crime. Do we have a lot? No, we don't. Do we have more than the average city? No, we don't. But we do hear about on occasion, golf carts being stolen from the town squares or from restaurants. Not often, I'm talking a handful in a year. But still, that makes front page news because we all have golf carts and we're all leery about it and we all worry about it. And sometimes we have golf clubs that we keep on the back of our cart will be stolen. Again, not a lot. I think very seldom are they stolen by a villager, but it does happen. It makes a front page of the village's news. You know, bad news travels really fast. Crime is not a serious problem here. We see police cars on yes. a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We see the community watch on a regular basis. There was an alert last week on next door that's, that specifically said, if you see a trailer, an empty trailer, circling the tra town square, there's a very good possibility they're looking for a golf cart so they can steal it, put it push it up on the trailer yeah. and get away with it. So, yeah. you know, we all have to watch out for each other and that's something that a lot of people do here in the villages. That's right. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. She's really good at it. And this is from Doris. There were three movie theaters. Now there is only one. How long will it be until they take that one away? We love going to the movies. We had lots of choices, but now we only have the one. Leesburg is too far to go. Please tell us they won't close the last one. Doris, I would like to tell you that. And I don't think they will. But you never know. Right now, the, the theater is doing very well. We checked, in fact. And here's a report. The theater at the Old Mill Playhouse is doing well and making a profit. Profit is made primarily through the concession sales and not the actual movie tickets. Many movies have sold out and do so on a consistent basis. Most often, the afternoon movie showtimes sell out. And with hits like Top Gun and Jurassic Park, almost all movies on $6 Movie Monday have sold out. Yes. And uh, that's yes. when we like to go. We do. We've gone to the Leesburg uh, Mall to see the movies. It's a very nice place too, but I like the comfort of going just down into our town. 
but uh, it has been full. We like to go. We encourage more people to go. Please keep our theater open. That's right. And I think they will as long as it's yes. making money. Right. You know, and the other two, I don't know if they'll ever come back. I hope they do. We love the Brownwood Theater. Yes. We like the closeness of it. Yes. It was very handy for us. I'd love to see it come back. Well, it would be handy, too, for the people down south of 44. They it's take, a shorter ride. Yes, it's a shorter ride. By the way, what's your favorite movie? Uh, 50 to 1. Oh, yeah, that's the one <laughs> that we were, we were extras in. <laughs> we were extras in that movie. <laughs> we used that for a trivia contest question on the ship. Uh, we had a little trivia contest for the cruisers with us, and they did not get it correct. No. <laughs> and you have to be really talented to find Linda and myself. She's in it more than I am. But she got to wear the dress and the big old floppy big old hat, hat and go to the winner's circle and yeah. all that. So uh, that was fun. That was William fun. Devane was the star there, and Skeet Ulrich, I think his name right. is. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, this Christian Kane that was in uh, True Blood, I think. And uh, it was a neat movie. It was a very great experience. Yes, it was. But what was your favorite movie? My favorite movie? I... I like Independence Day. Did you watch that one? Oh, that's a good one. Because I love the speech the president gives in that yes. movie. When he goes and he gets everybody around him and they're going to fight this unbeatable foe. Yeah. Inspiring stuff. Well, my, my favorite movie is, uh, what is that? Um, not Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Looper. Cut that out. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is that one where they sing on the mountains? <laughs> Sound of music? Yeah, huh? <laughs> Next question is about pools. In fact, we have about eight questions about pools today. Uh, Be honest with you. We love our house. We've said it and said it. We love it. We love our house. But we saw a house for sale about six or eight months ago. Before, just before everything got skyrocketed in price. Yeah. And we didn't buy it. It had a pool. We wanted to buy it. Oh, we thought yeah. about buying it, but we thought it was just outside our reach. Yeah. But I'm glad we didn't buy it. Because when you buy yep. a pool house, number one, you have electricity extra. Mm -hmm. Right. You have water bill because you have to keep it full. Yeah. It's, it's not hard to keep it full. And it's not a great, a great have, expense. Uh, you have to have the maintenance once a month. You have to yeah. have the, cl the chlorine or bromine mm -hmm. or salt water right. or whatever has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about those charges in just a minute. Your taxes are going to go up because it's going to add a, at least $100,000 value to your, house. to your house. You're going to have to be insured because now you have a potential death trap Ooh. on your property, <laughs> right? Yes. And your house is going to assess higher, which means your property tax is going to go up. So you're getting some pleasure for sure. And I like the idea of being able to swim anytime I want. Right. And if I want to swim after dark, I can swim after dark. Mm -hmm. I don't have to follow anybody else's schedule, but it's going to cost you. Right. This first question is, do, does an owner use their pool regularly? Or is it the main attraction when grandchildren are visiting? That's Jeff from New Hampshire. Now, when we see pools in the neighborhood, we don't see a lot of people in them, but we do see kids. When their grandkids are visiting, we definitely see kids visiting and, and using the pools. So. Every day we go to the golf course. We are on the golf cart paths, and we're riding around behind homes with pools. Yes. We hardly ever see anybody in those pools. We saw one lady today, and she was using her little uh, walking uh, weights or whatever they're called, and she was walking by and we waved to her. But I feel kind of guilty waving to people when you see them in the pool because they think they're in there all private and everything. And <laughs> yeah, they say, no. We saw her. <laughs> next question. Does a pool impact property taxes? When you build a pool, mm -hmm. your house is going to be more valuable. Ooh. When your house is more valuable, it's going to be assessed. And it may not be immediately that year, but eventually your taxes are going to go up and reflect that new assessment mm -hmm. on your house. So, yes, they will. Mm -hmm. I understand that some pool owners have solar heaters to help expand their pool season. But do pool owners close their pool in the winter or do they keep it open all year? Most people don't close their pools. They keep them open. They uh, use them. Now, snowbirds will probably close theirs and cover them. But the people that are around here all year long will keep them open and use them. They don't 
empty the pool, yeah. but snowbirds especially will put a color cover over it, and uh, they're locked up because they're all inside bird cages. Right. So it's going to be safe, but they'll be locked down. Mm -hmm. As far as the solar heat, lots of homes have solar heat, but I've seen an increase in the number of people that have gas heat mm -hmm. to their pools, and that is very expensive. Mm -hmm. We have a friend that uses the gas heat to heat up the hot tub right. and will not use it to heat the pool in the right. winter. It's just too costly. Right. But he'll heat the hot tub. He told me the other day it takes about a half an hour to heat it up and he'll be able to get in and use it. Mm -hmm. A similar question in the summertime, does the pool water temperature get too warm Ooh. to where it's no longer refreshing? I hear this all the time. People will say, oh, that pool's like bath water. That's the way I want it. <laughs> I want that water to be warm. Well, I don't like to get into cool water. Well, I've been in water aerobics class, and sometimes in August it is hot. It, the water is a lot warmer. So you're getting in and you're exercising, and it does feel a little bit warm. But otherwise, I think it's fine. Some people ask us, do they have chillers in the pool on those hot days to chill the water? <laughs> no, they don't. I'm sure some people do, but they don't have them here. There are over 100 pools here. Yeah. Think how expensive that would be. That would be. If a pool owner wants to travel, do they hire a pool company to balance the chemicals and clean the pool? If so, what is the cost? We looked into that. And it's not only if you want to travel. Most of the people we know with pools hire professional pool service to come in once a week and they balance the pH, they add or, or work on the chlorine or bromine or salt water levels and take care of it. That's expensive. Yeah. It's about $150 a month to take care of the pool, but you don't worry about it. You just uh, make an agreement with a company. They will come in. They'll come in the back way usually, take mm -hmm. care of the pool. You won't even know they've been there. They're gone, and your, your pool stays ready to use every day. Mm -hmm. Jeff also asks, since storage space is limited, especially not having a basement or shed, where do pool owners store their pool chemicals? I think that the storage is really not needed unless you're doing your own maintenance. Mm -hmm. But you would keep that in your garage. Or if you're a lucky owner of a premier home or a home that you've designed or helped, you may have built a closet outside by the pool. We yeah. know of people that do that. Right. And they can keep odds and ends in that closet. Or a deck box or something like That's that. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Jeff also asks, what's the approximate cost of running a pool pump each month? We don't know. Everybody we asked had no idea. They had no idea how to break that down. I guess a good way to find that out would be someone that's been waiting for a pool because it takes over a year and a half on a wait list yeah. to get a company to build your pool. Then you would have a good basis to base your old usage and new usage on. So we'll see if we can find somebody like that for you. We have heard that palm trees attracts rats. We know there are a lot of palm trees in the villages. Is there a rat problem? They carry disease and are disgusting creatures. No thanks if there are rats. <laughs> Sounds like rats are a deal breaker for that person. Deal breaker. We, say, we have said this before. We have only seen two since we moved here, and we think they were mice. We saw one at Eisenhower, and we right. saw another one run across a cart path. We, we don't know if they were tiny rats or large mice. <laughs> but take a look at what I found in my quest for rats. Here in the villages, you'll see a contraption along some of the buildings that looks like this. This is a rat trap. And they're behind all the strip malls. The pool behind our home has one. They've got these placed just in case there's a problem with rodents. Now, honestly, we have not had a problem. We've seen two, I'm gonna call them big mice since we've lived here on the car paths. So we don't see a lot of them. But that's what these boxes are. We didn't know it for two years what they were. I misspoke there and said rat trap. Those are not traps. Those are bait boxes. The company that's got the contract at those shopping centers or businesses puts a poison in that box and locks it. 
and there's a small hole that rodents can get into. It's called a rodent bait box. Mm. The rodent will go in and think he's finding a snack and well, then we'll go back and uh, kick the bucket. Yeah. And I had no idea what those were. I saw them sitting around. There's one right here, right outside our back door by the pool. Yeah, and we did not know pool. what it was. It's a bait box for rodents. As for palm trees attracting, no. Palm trees do have scraggly bark on occasion, and those give little nooks and crannies for things to hide. Mm -hmm. But we sit right here and look out at these palm trees every day. We have never seen any evidence of a rat yeah. or a mouse or anything living in those little nooks and crannies. Here's a letter from Mark and Shoko. My beautiful wife Shoko and I are expats living and working in South Korea and love your show. Are golf carts allowed on the fairways at all courses or is there a cart path only rule? Thank you. Mm. All executive courses are golf cart path only. Now, I say only, but on a few of these courses, there are some par four holes. Mm. Some of them even have two. There you are allowed to take your cart to the ball. On all of the par three holes on the executive courses, there are no golf carts allowed. On the championship courses, there may be a few par threes where it's not allowed, but on most holes, you can take your golf carts into the fairway and even into the rough to find your ball. If you have a disability or a handicapped license plate, you can apply for an accessibility pass that will allow you to use your golf cart on the fairways on all golf courses. Still, however, on extremely rainy days or in times of bad conditions, they may put a sign up that says, golf carts must stay on path. Mm -hmm. That means all golf carts must stay on the path, even the ones for the disabled drivers. Richard writes, we have heard it rains every day down there. That must be depressing. Is it gloomy and wet in the summer? Well, it does rain just about every day. Uh, and when it does uh, in the summer, usually it's in the afternoon, late afternoon. And it doesn't bother me one bit because I tell you what, all day long, the buildup of the beautiful clouds is amazing. It's gorgeous. And it's not gloomy to me. That's, no, it's not <laughs> gloomy down here. No. Um, it, it does not really rain every day. In fact, it might only rain four times a week in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and it may rain everywhere you can see and not on you. Yeah. It's always spotty, it mm -hmm. seems like. Mm -hmm. The rain here is a nice thing, and you'd be welcoming it yeah. after a very hot day. Yeah. And we've come to our last question. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Sharice in Chicago. I'm a crafty person. I know there's lots of clubs. I'm interested in the woodworking one. Can women join and would the members be willing to, to help me? Is there a charge? Good question. Yes, women can join the woodworking club. There is a wait list. You could get on that wait list and you'll have to go through some training and you'll have to pay an initiation fee and you have to pay yearly dues, but women can join. In fact, the president the entire time that I've been here until now, it's just been just changed, but it was a woman. She mm -hmm. was the president yeah. of the Woodworking Club. So you would be welcome. And you wondered, will the members be willing to help you? It's a group of the most helpful yeah. people you'll ever find. Charitable people. They do a lot of things for kids and a lot of things for, the, for uh, uh, needy causes. So you'll be right in there with them. Mm -hmm. They'll help you all they can. We were number 330 and 331 on the list when we got here. Six or seven months later, boom, they said, we well, are ready for you, or do you want to join? I did, she didn't, so I am a member. Uh, to remain a member, you also have to donate four days of work a year. So I have to go in four times and donate time to uh, be a monitor or assist in the tool yeah. cabinet or something. Yeah. But it's, it's a good place, and wow, what a wood shop. Some of you saw the show that we did on it about a year ago. He's been pretty patient, but you might have heard him whining here in the last five minutes or so. He's chomping at the bit to do his segment. Are you ready? Take it away. Hi, everybody. Isn't it a great day? I have a riddle for 
you. There's a clerk at the butcher shop. He is five feet ten inches tall. And he wears size 13 sneakers. What does he weigh? Do you know? He weighs meat because he's a butcher. <laughs> hey, did you all hear the rumor about butter? Well, I'm not going to spread it. Spread it. Butter. Get it? <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Good job again, buddy. Good job. You always have something cool. Appreciate it. We have a big show in the works for Thursday. We hope that you'll tune in and watch it. And that's going to do it for this edition of... Bag Monday. You can join us over on Facebook if you like. We're going to post a lot of pictures and odds and ends from our crews if you're interested. So go over to Facebook, The Village's Newcomers, Jerry and Linda, and uh, follow us. If you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with all your friends. Until next time. See you when you get here.